Now, Bentham's theory is open to the following criticisms or we can say objections. Firstly, Bentham, though an altruist, believes in psychological hedonism. But psychological hedonism is defective. It is not true that we desire pleasure. We, on the contrary, seek the desired object which, when attained, gives pleasure. But we do not directly desire pleasure. Moreover, the more we hanker after pleasure, the less we get it. Besides this, if it is a fact that every man seeks his own pleasure, then there is no meaning in maintaining that everyone should seek his own pleasure. Secondly, the hedonistic calculus mentioned by Bentham is impracticable. Pleasure and pain cannot be weighed on the two sides of a balance like material things. <clears throat> the feelings of pleasure and pain are subjective and therefore variable. Therefore, nothing can be added to or subtracted from them. Thirdly, Bantam's altruism is after all gross or sensualistic. He has however mentioned uh, purity as one of the dimensions of the quantity of pleasure but introduction of this dimension has not been able to alienate his doctrine. By purity he has not meant any superior quality it, rather, it only means freedom from pain. There is no qualitative difference among pleasures, but this cannot be accepted. Artistic enjoyment and uh, pleasure of eating sweet meats are different in kind. Thirdly, Bantha also failed to satisfactorily explain the transition from egoism to altruism. He has however mentioned extensity of pleasure. In fact, uh, the pleasure which have the um, dimension of extensity, that is the pleasure that can be enjoyed by greater number of persons are intellectual and aesthetic. Sensuous pleasures cannot be shared by many persons. It is evident, therefore, that extensity of pleasure has a reference to its quality. But Bantam does not seem to recognize any qualitative difference among pleasures. And finally, Bantam has mentioned four names of external sanctions to explain the social feelings in man who are by nature egoistic. These laws are obeyed not for their own sake but for the aggrandizement of our own interest. These external sanctions can create a physical compulsion but never moral obligation. In choosing to obey the external sanctions, we evince prudence but prudence is not.